Louise Harris is part of the Just Stop Oil Coalition, spent eight days in jail for climbing a gantry on the M25. Here she is on the gantry. Hello, my name is Louise. I'm 24 years old and I'm here. I'm here because I don't have a future. And you might hate me for doing this and you're entitled to hate me. But I wish you would direct all that anger and hatred at our government. They are betraying young people like me. I would love to be there if they did their lawful duty to their own citizens. I'm part of the Just Stop Oil Coalition demanding an end to all new oil and gas licenses in the UK. What we're asking for is what all the scientists are asking for, what the United Nations are asking for, the International Energy, the IPCC. How many more people have to say, we don't have a livable future if you continue licensing oil and gas for you to listen? Why does it take young people like me up on a fucking gantry on the M25 for you to listen? Louise is with me now. Hello, Louise. Hi, Stephen. Thanks for having me. Um, why does this mean so much to you? And... More to the point, what do you make of COP27? Um, well, it means so much to me. It means so much to so many people that are waking up to this crisis because it's a matter of life or death. It's a black and white situation that requires a black and white response. And we have not seen that from our world leaders. Um, you know, COP27, much like the other COPs, you know, we, we still are on track for human extinction. So, of course, it's not a positive outcome. And, you know, a, lo a lot of what people are saying, you know, presenters and journalists are talking about the losses and damages. But what we're not acknowledging is that world leaders are still planning to create more losses and damages. It's like me saying to you, you know, OK, so, you know, I burnt your house down. Yeah, I'm going to give you some money to build a new house, but I'll probably burn that house down as well. And with COP27, there has been some achievement, but 1.5 is not guaranteed. Louise, it hasn't been achieved. So what's our future, in your view? Exactly. I mean, we already knew that a few weeks ago. Antonio Guterres said there's no credible pathway in place for 1.5 degrees. You know, as the person before me that was just on your show right now, um, as they said, that, that means total societal collapse. You know, what, the whole reason for the Paris Agreement sticking to 1.5 degrees is because of anything above that, you know, it is, it's, it, we're exceeding climate tipping points, which, mean, which means it becomes irreversible. It means it's uncontrollable. It's human extinction. It's, you know, I saw on the news the other day the missile landing in Poland. I was terrified. So many people were terrified. Is this World War Three? That is the fear everybody should have about the climate crisis because it will be World War Three with no possible end because it will be out of our control by that point. So we need to end all new oil and gas licenses. But our government, the UK government, they're planning on over 100 new oil and gas licenses because they have a responsibility to make sure people have enough energy to protect themselves with heat. They have a responsibility to protect life. We would have energy with renewable energies. In fact, we're in a cost of living crisis. People can't afford their energy right now. And, and renewable energies are nine times cheaper. And investing in new oil and gas, that won't be available. Renewable energies need decades. a lot of upfront investment, Louise, which people don't have. Uh, I mean, our government, our government is the ones that need to invest in them. We have fossil fuel companies raking in billions of pounds in profit. We should be taxing. We should be doing a sufficient windfall tax that allows for proper investment in renewable energies. And, well, the government's you know, just I'm announced sure. an increase in windfall taxes on the energy companies, haven't they? That's what Jeremy Hunt did on Thursday. Sure. And, and they should still stop subsidizing fossil fuel companies. We still subsidize fossil fuel companies, 230 million pounds a week. Even that w amount of windfall tax, you know, that's still, it's still not enough. None of this is enough. As I said, it's a matter of life or death and we're not acting like we're in an emergency. We're making small increments here and there, but it, it means nothing when it's, when it's life or death and we're still not saving life. 
And yet a new funding arrangement at COP27 was agreed. It's called Loss and Damage, Louise, as you know. It's a pooled fund for countries most affected by climate change. It has been hailed as an historic moment. Yeah, and, you know, of course we should be paying the losses and damages. The countries responsible for this crisis absolutely have to pay the pay for these losses and damages. But what's being completely overlooked is there's no plan to end fossil fuels, to end new fossil fuel investment. So that, of course, is going to create more losses and damages. Are you beyond worried about your future now? Are you worried about yourself? Are you worried about the generation after you, Louise? How quickly do you think this is going to happen? Yeah, absolutely. Myself and many of the Just Stop Oil campaigners, a lot of us are young people, we're terrified. You know, my generation is terrified. Who's going to promise us a future when already at our doorstep is, you know, on our doorstep is 40 degree heat in the UK this summer. Over a thousand people died over a matter, over a few days. So, you know, it's already here. 33 million people in Pakistan have been displaced. There's 22 million people in the Horn of Africa starving. You know, it's already here. It's not a future, but of course, it's only going to get worse and worse. And and if you look at the scientists' predictions, in the next 10 to 20 years, we are looking at a billion climate refugees. The latest IPCC report, they predict by 2030, which is eight years time, half of the African continent, they will be displaced due to water scarcity. That is a global crisis. That is crop failure. That is famine. That is water shortages. That is a global conflict over resources. Uh, and that's just, what what kind of future is that what, what is that you see a lot of you are articulate passionate well educated young people louise but some of you take away from that with 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 in in the view of some of the public with these protests where you're inconveniencing the public you're you know i'm not talking about you personally here but some people with who share your views you know throwing stuff over art paintings to get attention and all that comes with it. And in some people's views, it seems cheap, it seems immature, it seems slightly crazy. Yeah, and it's no wonder that these people find us immature and crazy when presenters like yourself aren't reporting on the climate crisis as an emergency in the COVID-19 pandemic. What am I doing now? Pardon? What am I doing now? What am I doing yeah, now? Yeah, you're doing it on this show, but you've only invited me on this show because I've caused such disruption. Even this show, this is a great show. I've just been listening to it. And for the first time I've heard, yeah, what does 1.5 degrees mean? But the BBC continue to invite climate deniers like Julia Hartley Brewer onto Question Time. You know, that is perpet what Would you invite a Holocaust denier into a conversation about the Holocaust? Why aren't we reporting it like the COVID-19 pandemic? It should be front page news of every newspaper every day. The main headline you can't just report on it like the sports or something just happening in the background that you give us like little well, updates on well people have different views than you louise and julia hartley brewer is, is entitled to be on the bbc as you are and i'm not, not doing a conversation about julia tonight i'm not doing well well there are different approaches to how climate change uh, should be tackled. You can see that from COP27. You can see that the whole thing overran because there's not a consensus as hard to approach it. And guess what of a wee surprise for you? You lot, whether you sit in motorways or throw jelly over paintings or whatever, you're, you're, you're not going to have a monologue. There are going to be people on the BBC both agreeing and disagreeing with you. You know, if this was a matter of opinion, you know, then then that would be that would be fair enough. But this is science. All the leading scientists are saying what you know, we're heading towards absolute catastrophe, inviting someone on who says climate, the climate crisis isn't real. It's not man made. It's just the weather. That's what she says. Inviting someone like that on who is clearly funded by fossil fuel companies. <laughs> that is no, 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 you don't know that. No, 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 you do not know that. You see, here's the irresponsibility coming from, you know, I, Louise. Here's the, here's the, you know, you, you need to play by the rules of society. And, you know, she's not clearly funded by anybody. She's a well-respected, she's a she well-respected journalist. She is a well-respected journalist. There's absolutely no evidence that she's funded by anybody. And I would defend her character, full stop. Good night, Louise. Thank you for coming on. It is 